You know how they say baking's an art? <laughs> You're witnessing it. Whoa, crazy, wow. Hello, I'm Sola, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make toffee sandwich cookies. It's got really nice buttery toffee flavor, brown butter icing in the middle, you know, holding the two crispy cookies together. And I think the best part about this is these cookies last a long time. They are perfect for shipping, because it's cookie season. Yeah. It's the season of cookies. This is a version of a cookie I made last year. I wanted to figure out recipes that would be really, really shelf stable because the mail was a little bit slow. And I think it might be slow again this year. So this cookie, it's a little bit higher in sugar and it's baked until it's really, really dry so it stays crisp and it doesn't get stale. And there's no moisture really in the filling so your cookies won't get soggy. Not only do these cookies last a long time, but I actually think they taste better after a few days. So they're the perfect cookie to ship to your loved ones. But it's not just about travel, these are actually tasty too. So last year, the version of these cookies I made were a little more complicated, like I toasted the flour separately, and I toasted the sugar separately, and I browned the butter, and then brought it all together. But I found that I can get the same kind of flavor by using toffee bits. These are great, it's just little bits of toffee. You know like that toffee bar you get that's covered in chocolate? It's that without the chocolate, and you can usually find it right next to the chocolate chips this time of year. And I'm gonna blitz this up and use this kind of as some of the sugar and fat in our cookie. So we're gonna get that deep, toasty toffee flavor instantly. To start the cookie, we're gonna blitz up the toffee with the sugar, salt, and baking soda until it's really nice and fine. So, in goes my toffee, sugar, salt and baking soda. All right, are you like inside the bowl? Getting an action shot. All right, let's see, okay. I'm gonna get the toffee as fine as possible, and this is gonna be like my sugar slash some of my fat that I'm gonna cream in the KitchenAid until it's nice and fluffy, but wait, okay, so I tried this recipe all the way in the food processor, so I would take it to this point and then add the butter and egg white and flour right in here, and it does work, but it's like more of a hard crunchy. The choice is yours. Okay, so now I'm gonna cream this together with some room temperature butter and an egg white. Room temperature is important, not just because it's gonna to come together faster, but it will be like a fluffier cookie too. So many appliances. I hope you still try this. It's worth it. My butter's just a little bit scattered throughout. It's not gonna fully cream because there's not a lot of um, fat in there. If you give the butter a little bit of a head start, when you add the egg white, it'll all come together. We're gonna paddle this together for about two minutes. You're gonna see it just gets a little bit lighter. Do you have any leftover m and cookies? All right, so I'm gonna get in here and scrape the bowl and the paddle. Make sure it's super nice and homogenized. Every single cookie will have like the perfect shape and texture. No, oh, I forgot the vanilla. Wait, sorry. Pause, it's okay, it's okay. I meant to add it at the, with the egg white, but we're gonna be, it's gonna be fine guys, don't worry. If you were paying attention, which I wasn't, put the vanilla in when you add the egg white. Okay, cool. So we've got a little bit of lightness, a little bit of fluff. I think that sometimes with cookies, you're so worried about gluten development, you might undermix, but you know, it's okay. Give it like a full 30 seconds so everything's like evenly mixed. You don't want like any pockets of butter that's not that's not like hooked up with some starch, you know what I mean? Now this scrape is more about, you know, making sure you get all of your cookie dough. No cookie left behind. Let's just smush it together. And then divide this in half and roll each half. Flour the surface, do, do, do. Little bit on top. And the dough is pretty soft, so we're gonna be gentle. A little roll, a little turn. We're gonna go for the thickness of two pennies. It's not like it's gonna hurt it if you go a little thicker, but when you stack them together with the icing, it just gets to be like too big of a mouthful. So it's nice if you keep these nice and thin and delicate. And then once it all feels even and you think you're close, double check it by just cutting into it. Huh, that looks good. That's like the thickness of two pennies. Okay, so I'm gonna lightly flour my cutter and we're gonna cut out two inch circles. I like to stick with the circle because it makes it pretty easy to fill it with icing, but 
you can totally cut this out. The cookie holds its shape pretty well once you bake it, so if you've got like an intricate cutter, it can handle it. These only need like a half an inch apart. They don't spread very much. So I can usually fit 24 on one of these trays. Save the scraps from both halves and then put them together and roll them again. These are gonna go in the fridge, freezer, whatever. We, we just wanna get the dough really nice and firm. If you didn't chill the cookies, your edges are gonna end up a little bit darker. Not the end of the world, but these are gifts. This is holiday love. We want to be perfect, yeah? So we're gonna egg wash half of these cookies and then place slivered almonds on them. So that's gonna be like the tops. And now you can be like as precise or loosey-goosey here. You don't need to press down. Once the cookie warms up in the oven, the almonds will totally stick. Maybe we just wanna be really like minimalistic. One almond, it's kind of sophisticated. It reminds me of those almond cookies that some of the Chinese restaurants had. I love those cookies. I would never actually do this in real life because I like my cookies to all look exactly the same. So I'm only, this is just for show. They're gonna take like 10 to 12 minutes to bake. They're not gonna feel crisp when you take them out, but they're gonna be deeply browned. Hey Siri, can you set a 11 minute timer? Okay, 11 minutes and counting. Cool, cool. And then we just keep going. Wow, art. They're gonna be brown. Like, don't get scared. That browning's because of the toffee and like it's gonna make everything get really nice caramelized. We wanna make sure these are nice and cooked through because we want them to be crispy and dry and that's how you're gonna make sure they're gonna last. So I'm gonna let these cool on the sheet tray so they can just like kind of coast all the way to crispy town. So you wanna make the icing when you're right about ready to fill because once the icing sets up, it's really, really stiff and the cookies will like snap when you're trying to push it together. So I'm gonna get my piping bag ready so as soon as the icing's done, we can go right in there, yeah? Ready for filling. Let's brown our butter. Like around medium, medium low, because if you go too hot, your butter will brown before the water is cooked out of it. Because if there's any moisture left in this icing, over time, the cookies are gonna suck it up and get a little soft. You wanna keep it moving so the milk solids brown evenly. Okay, do you hear it's getting quieter? If you were to crank it right now, you could really easily zoom past brown into burnt and not even cook off all the water. So like, patience is key. Ooh, okay. Do you hear that? There's silence. Moisture has cooked out. Now I'm gonna pour it into a heat proof bowl. Okay, a little vanilla, a little salt. We're gonna sift over the powdered sugar just to make sure there's no lumps. Okay, we did it. Stir. Whoa, see all those brown specks? Wow. Okay, icing going into our piping bag. Bloop. As soon as the icing cools down, because we're using butter, it's just gonna get really thick and hard to smooth. This is my favorite part. <laughs> just to like perfectly fill it with no air gas. Okay, I'm gonna go for like a big opening. We want just shy of a tablespoon per cookie. So you want it to go on hot, because once it cools, the icing gets really stiff. I think the cookies are best the next day, once the icing is like totally set, and like all these like really toasty brown flavors that we've developed come through. But yeah, of course, you're gonna eat one today. You're gonna eat one warm. Oh, nice snap. Whoa, whoa. You can tell it's not like totally dense. It's got this lightness to it, and that texture is because we creamed it. So if you did it in the food processor, it would still work, it would still be a cookie, but it would just be like, you wouldn't see these little coarseness that gives it like a little bit of lightness. Mm -hmm. What I really like about these cookies is they really, really taste like the essence of almond toffee. Outside it's like really crisp, but there's like a little slight chew that kind of reminds you of when you're like biting into toffee. And the texture of the slivered almonds on top is really nice. Don't be cute. Put as many as you can on there. Once the icing is set, this is like super sturdy. It's not gonna break in shipping. It's gonna last a long time. And it's gonna still be delicious when it gets to your, you know, your loved ones. You can find this recipe and a bunch of other holiday cookie recipes on New York Times Cooking.